Uh, okay, so hello everyone again. Uh, new day, new people, new sweaters. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, so what we did last time was we worked out how to calculate the distance from our two objects. So our sun to our planet or our sun to our star, right? So we calculated R. Now, in your activity here, you see the, uh, the code that you need to copy to your, um, to your okay. script. So I'll go ahead and make that a little bigger so people can see it. There you go. Hit so, yeah, as you can see, instead of our square root symbol, we're using SQRT. Instead of um, the uh, to the power of two, we are just multiplying our two terms by each other. So instead of a squared plus b squared, we're doing a times a plus b times b, um, and that's that just has to do with the the syntax of the language that we're using here. Right. So you might wonder, like, why why don't they write it? Why aren't we writing it uh, like this? Because it wouldn't, you know, w this would seem to make more sense, right? It would definitely be more intuitive. I mean, it's, it'd be a shorter statement. So that, I mean, that's kind of what the equation looks like when we write it on, write it on the glass board, right? Um, but late, later on, what we can do is we can actually change it to this, and we'll show you how it doesn't work. Okay. okay? Sounds good. Um, Suffice it to say, this this up carrot two thing does does not mean what you think that it means. Okay, okay? It does not mean what you think it means. Yeah, so we'll we'll come back to that uh, later on. But so I'm going to go ahead and erase that because that is not the right thing to do. Got okay? it. All right. Um, what's the next thing? I think the next thing in our activity would be to calculate the angle. So once once we're moving, we're starting to move around. The computer is going to need to know the angle at which the object is moving. So mm -hmm. you see this, uh, this Greek letter theta here. This indicates the angle um, that the object is projected from the axis. And we're going to use a little trigonometry to figure that out. So you might remember SOHCAHTOA. We're just going to use the TOA part. Um, so using the tangent, so TOA, T-O-A, would be tangent opposite over adjacent. Yep. Okay, I remember my trig. <laughs> okay, so let's let's jump to the glass board here and uh, and try to figure out what this is because because we know the position of you know the blob or the planet you know we know the x position we know the y position we know the position of the sun here what we don't know is the angle because we need that for the next part right so let's write that out. calling theta. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you would write that, normally you would write tangent of theta equals opposite over adjacent, right? So are we going to call this A, B, and C? Or are we going to? Sure. Okay, so here's our A, our B, and our C sides. So opposite B over adjacent A. All right, now we actually want to know the angle, so to do this you're going to take the the uh, inverse tangent, so we have the theta, which equals the inverse tangent of our same fraction here, b over a. Okay? So that's how we want it. Now we need to actually put this in terms of our, our sides and in terms of our computer language. Right, but what, what again is a and b? Well, a is our x minus x sun. Right, so this is our little planet, right? So this is x, y. And then the sun is down, down in the here. corner there. And this one is 
X. Maybe just XS, maybe. Sun. Oh, yeah. looks good, okay. Y sun. All right. All right. So there's our coordinates. So remember that A is going to be X minus X sun. Mm-hmm. And B is Y minus Y sun. Right? And so that means that this is... This is going to be, we can just plug it right in, our tan inverse, and our B, we plug Y minus Y sun over adjacent X minus X sun, and there we have our angle. Cool. So so now, like you said, now we just have to put this into the code. right? Right. So remember, we don't use the minus one. We're not going to use the uh, to the power of in the computer language. We're also not going to just use tan. We're going to use what's the arctangent. what's the fa- fancy arctangent for for this language? Yeah. So another another l- word for this is arctangent. So if you go asking math people what what that means, uh, and so there's a particular way of doing arctangent uh, in the code that that we'll show you in just a second. Okay. So should we go back to our activity? Yeah. All right. Let's do it. So it turns out that the right way to put this into the code is with that that thing there, right? Right here. And here's our, our arctan right here. Right. So I'm going to go ahead and cut, click copy code of the clipboard. And I'm going to paste it into here. And by the way, the uh, earlier the best place to put this, uh, this distance uh, estimate is kind of down here. Um, it's tempting to put it up here. It's not going to work if it's up there because that code only gets run once. Uh, we, we need to calculate the distance between the planet and the sun at, you know, every, every time, so 60 times a second. So we've got to make sure that it's inside the draw function. Um, we also need to calculate the angle between the planet and the sun uh, 60 times a second. So that also needs to be inside the, the draw function. So don't, um, yeah, don't paste it up here. Um, so, that, so, there's your, so I just did Control-V to paste that into there. Um, now again... When we, when we go from math world to computer world, uh, a lot of times there's, there's another layer of things to think about, right? So a lot of people, like if, if you look at the way that we derived that equation, uh, you, you, might have, you might have guessed that we could have done something like this. So a tan is like this. I'm going to do a parenthesis here. Because remember, we were dividing y divided by x, right? Right, because it's... Opposite divided by adjacent. Adjacent. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is this is certainly what uh, what we had written down, uh, but there's a problem with this. Do you know Do you know what the problem is? Let's see. Um, we have we have our our thing in parentheses for our a tan, right? Uh-huh. And then you're you're separating out the other parentheses. Is that right? Uh, so now I'm dividing two. It's it's a little small on the screen, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in <laughs> for you. Yeah, I can barely see it myself. Um, all right, so there so there we are. So there's theta, right? So what I did is I I just rewrote this thing. So originally, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and paste it again. So originally it looked like this. So this is the right thing to do. Okay, and it's this a tan two function. It's not actually arctangent squared. Um, the two stands for uh, two arguments. So it's, you're passing two numbers to this function. Uh, one number is the difference between uh, you know, the y value of the planet and the y value of the sun. The other number is the, is the difference between the x value of the planet and x value, x value of the sun. So that's why there's a two there. It's still an arctangent function. It's still, a, it's still an inverse tangent thing. All right, so if you have two arguments, then you're just w- going to want to put your, your two variables side by side like you have it separated with a comma. That's right. But what's this, the problem with doing it this way? Do this you know? Is, I don't know. This is ma- Oh, with the, with the a tan without the two? Or? Right. Because oh, we, we oh, could I do it this way. Mean. Like it would okay. give us a number yeah. if we did it this way. The problem would be the negatives. That's right. So, so if you had... 
So let's say that you you take the diagram like we had before, right? Um, so here's a here's a question. In this diagram, is is this is this positive or negative if, when the planet is up here? It's positive. Positive, right? Because x is larger than x sun because mm -hmm. it's further from the origin, right? When if when we, if we bring it over here, though. Right, but if you brought it over there, then the, it would be the opposite, right? Because mm -hmm. x would be less than x sun. Right, and we would end up with a negative value. We end up with a negative value. Um, now, our, now, arctan would still work in that case, right? So if we did this function here, we divided the two. Um, if we just divided the two, that would still work. But here's the problem. is What, what happens if the planet is, is down here, where you're standing? Down below down and to the left of the sun. All right, so we're in a completely different quadrant. Right. Quadrant one, two, three, and four. So what is x minus x sun if it's in below and to the left of the sun? Is it positive or negative? X minus x sun is still going to be negative. Okay. What about y minus y sun? Is that it will also be negative. And so... So we've got two negatives. So when we divide the two, it's going to be a, a negative... Y minus, you know, y minus y sun is going to be negative. X minus x sun is going to be negative. A negative divided by a negative is what? It's a positive. A positive. So we would get a positive angle out of this. That's right. That's not going to be good because it's not in a positive quadrant. That's right. So we want to make sure that if, if this thing is all the way over on the other side, that the angle that we get is, isn't like, you know, positive 45. That, that's, that's totally incorrect, right? Mm-hmm. That, that doesn't make any sense if, if the object was all the way over there and it was giving us something like positive 45 degrees or something. That's, that's just totally wrong. So that's why you got to use arctan 2 instead of uh, just regular arctan with the ratio. Okay, that's a clever trick. Thank you. Everybody <laughs> should know about arctan 2. It's one of my favorite functions. Um, I, I stumbled across it uh, much too late in life. Now, now I love it. So, um, so I'm going to get rid of this thing. Uh, but later on, what you can do is you can try that. You can try it out. Like once we get the code working, you can go back in there and maybe try this and kind of see why it doesn't work. It should give exactly the same results if the planet is you know up here, mm -hmm. right? Or if the planet's over there, exactly the same results. But the problem is that when it's is when the planet's over here, it's going to give something weird, or maybe even down there. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and erase that. Good riddance. Yeah, <laughs> we won't miss you. We won't miss you. All right, so we got that under there. Um, now what's the next thing that we should do? Let's go back to our activity and check that out. I think we need to uh, go back to our, our gravitational force. Oh, that's right, yeah. Not scrolling. Let's see here. Yeah, right now if you hit play on the program, it's not really going to do much, right? Because we haven't actually... We put in a bunch of new variables, but we haven't actually... Um, put in the actual gravitational force. So here's the gravitational force here. Right, so you can see this F grav, which we talked about earlier on the board. So we can copy this, copy it to the clipboard, yep. and then paste it into our code. Let's go ahead and paste it right here. All right, so just to remind you, we did add, scrolling isn't, uh, isn't working here. Yeah, just use the arrow keys to move the cursor. Yeah, nothing's happening. I don't know why it's not Okay. Working. All right, so we did add our M and our G here, right? So, so we have, we've made our mass equal to 1,000, and we've made our gravitational constant equal to 100. These are just arbitrary numbers that are going to simplify our uh, our problem here. Okay. So, in terms of the uh, syntax we're using here, we have our G times our big M times our little M divided by our R squared. Yeah, so, so again, instead of doing, you know, R caret 2 thing, we're going to multiply it by itself again. So the same trick that we use kind of up here. Yeah. Is what we're doing. Okay. So we've copied that to our 
script. And now, now what we've got to do is we have to calculate the acceleration. So we've got the force in there. We've got all these variables, which is great, but still the code's not really going to be doing anything just yet. Right? So if you go ahead and press play, you'll see that uh, hopefully there's no errors. But, Let's uh, move this back over here. Yeah, it's still just going to be going upwards, right? Because we haven't, we haven't really done anything. What happened to the sun? Are you standing? Oh, there it is. Okay. Oh, whoops. Amy's standing in front of the sun there. Uh, right. don't, look, don't, don't look directly into the sun, by the way. You don't want to, you just want to like avert your eyes a little bit. I'm going to step off screen here. Okay. Here we go. Um, so we've got our, our variables here. We've got our, we're calculating our force, but until we calculate our accelerations and our change in velocity, it's not actually going to deflect the thing. It's just going to continue moving in a straight line. So that's kind of the next thing is to figure out what these accelerations are, and specifically we need to figure out what the acceleration is in the x direction and what the acceleration is in the y direction. Okay? Okay. And so that's a little bit tricky, but at the end of the day we're going to find that the, the, co the following code, if you want to go down a little bit, uh, in a minute we'll find that this is what the x and y forces are. And then we're going to use those forces divided by the mass to get the accelerations. And then we're going to get the accelerations multiplied by the time step to get uh, the change in velocity. Um, All right, so I'll go ahead and copy that to our okay. script. Yeah, but we should talk about that code in, in, in a second so people understand where it came from. All right. So if you look in the activity here, you see our blue, our, our blue triangle here. This is uh, in the same way that we talked about the coordinates of our planet and our sun in terms of, of the uh, x and the y projection. So here's our y projection and here's our x projection. We're going to talk about the force in the same way. So if the force of gravity is going to uh, pull on our planet, and remember we're not going to do it so that they're both pulling on each other, but the sun is going to pull on our planet, then the force of gravity, the magnitude, is going to be this long blue arrow here. So the magnitude yeah. talks about the length, and the length of that arrow is going to change, you know, depending on where around our uh, star the planet is. But in order to describe that force, we need to project it onto our x and y axis. So that's what we copied into our script earlier. This is actually a lot like the Asteroids game, where you had the little ship, and depending on which way it was pointing, that you know there was a component of that acceleration in the x direction, a component of that acceleration in the y direction. Okay, that sounds really similar. All right, so we, here we have our forces. We've copied and pasted in here. Our Fx is the force in the x direction. So that is this guy right here. Um, the force in the x direction, and then we have our force in the y direction. Okay. And why is there a minus sign there? Well, because our, uh, our, our sun isn't going to be repelling the planet in a positive direction, right? The gravitational force is going to pull it in. Gravity sucks, people. It attracts. So that's why we have <laughs> to have that minus sign. Because if you didn't have that minus sign you would have this arrow going up this way and the planet would like accelerate off this way. And so if you remove the minus signs later, uh, you'll see that all sorts of crazy stuff happens. But let's talk about why these equations make sense. So the, 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 the thing we just put into the code, right? All right, let's take a look at that code. So why, why do these equations make sense? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write them up here just so we can have them as an easy reference as we, as we talk about this. And what we're going to do is we're going to think about two different cases. One case is what, what if theta is equal to zero, mm -hmm. and then in another minute we'll talk about what, it, what if theta is equal to like 90 degrees. Got it. So the equations are this, F grav. Now is F grav positive or, or negative, by the way? F grav is negative. Oh, F grav is this positive, but uh, we're going right. to add our sign to it. That's yeah. right. So, those, so we're adding a sign there. Uh, 
So there's no monkey business. Like this is always going to be positive. That's so that's that's the easy part. So if, if this is minus, then uh, that's pretty simple. And then f grav times sine theta. Okay. So let's go back to the diagram here, real quick. So if so, let's say that theta is zero. Where is the planet going to be? So if theta is zero. The planet's going to be horizontal and uh, on the positive yeah, side. Yeah, kind of like right here mm -hmm. on the diagram. Like, yep. Um, and so if the planet is here, in what direction will the gravitational force be? So if theta is uh, zero, uh, mm -hmm. that makes cosine of theta positive, right? And our F grav is positive, but then we have our negative sign in there. That means the force mm -hmm. is going to be pointing toward the sun in the negative direction. The F the Fx force. Right, so if theta is zero, you said cosine of theta... So cosine cos of zero is one. Is one. So that means this whole thing goes to one. Mm -hmm. And so this is minus F grav. And then this, what it, if theta is zero here... Then that's going to be zero. So sine of zero is zero. Zero. That makes the force zero. in our y direction zero. Right. So, does so the qu does this make sense though? Like, does it make sense for if the planet was over here, this spot, if this was our planet, uh, does it does it make sense if the force of gravity is let's see, according to this, it's in the negative direction. Mm -hmm. Does that make Does that make sense? It does make sense. There wouldn't be any any vertical uh, external forces acting on it, so it will. It will just go in the horizontal direction along our x-axis. That's right. And so if we didn't have this minus sign here, we would conclude that if the planet was over here, the force would be this way. <laughs> so, which is not what gravity would do. Gravity would not, like, push this thing away. Gravity sucks. Or it was going to pull it in, right? Right. So, so this formula seems to make sense. And then what we can do, uh, let's, let's imagine that the planet, instead of being here, let's say it's up like this. So what, what angle is that? Okay, so if it's at 90 degrees. Yeah, 90 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this here. Um, we we want to figure out what, what uh, these equations give for 90 degrees. So, so still for our x, x uh, direction of the force, we're going to have f grav times cosine theta. Mm -hmm. And then for a y direction, we have f grav times sine theta. But this time, if, if we're, at, we're at 90 degrees here, uh -huh. our cosine theta, theta is 90 degrees, so that means our cosine theta is going to be zero. So that whole term goes to zero, yep. and we have no force in the x direction. Mm -hmm. And again, if we have theta equals 90 degrees, when we do sine of 90 degrees, that is going to give us one. One. All right. Okay. So we have only uh, a force in the y direction. All right. Now, does this make sense? So again, so if the planet is up, is up here, mm -hmm. it's not going to be repelled upward, right? right? It's going to be pulled downward. Down. So that's why we need that negative sign there. Yeah. Okay. I think this all makes sense.